Today we are going to talk about common apples as a medicine. What are the real health benefits of apples? How can apples help people with cardiovascular disease? Do apples help normalize the so-called cholesterol or lipid metabolism? That is good and bad cholesterol. How do apples affect bone health? Can apples be antioxidants? And therefore, how much can eating apples be beneficial for cancer? You and I will discuss a very interesting thing. Apples and asthma and obstructive pulmonary disease. How apples help avoid diabetes. Can apples help with weight loss? How do apples protect the stomach and intestines? Finally, let's decide in what form and which apples are best to consume. Do we drink the juice or eat whole apples, peel them or not? We'll discuss whether apples are often coated, how harmful it is, and how to tell the difference between natural wax and wax applied during storage. We'll also discuss which apples are healthier. Not just a list, but exactly which varieties of apples are the healthiest. And, of course, we'll learn about the harmfulness of apples, because apples, unfortunately, can be harmful too. We will talk about what is the therapeutic dose of apples. That is, how many of them you need to eat to get a therapeutic effect. That is, for apples to become your medicine. All information is verified and peer-reviewed by qualified professionals. If you want to become the master of your health, put a like and we'll get started. My dear viewers, next, to maximize your enjoyment of this video, I suggest turning the sound up or putting on headphones so you can focus on what I'm going to say rather than what I'm going to show you on the screen. Just listen and go about your business at the same time. Now, let's get down to business. As always, we will tell you about apples based solely on scientific studies, mostly done on humans, minimally on animals or in test tubes. So, first things first. When you and I talk about the benefits of any fruit, the first thing we naturally think about is how many nutrients it contains. And the commonly accepted nutrients are naturally occurring vitamins and minerals. The beneficial part of apples, and many other foods, as you have learned from my previous videos, are the so-called polyphenols. This is a colossal group of substances that in very different ways, and from different foods, have a very complex and powerful effect on our health parameters. And it is the high content of polyphenols that determines the beneficial properties of apples. Polyphenols are known for their ability to improve the so-called endothelial function, that is, the work of our blood vessels. The work of the heart, brain and all our other organs naturally depends on them. So if you and I are talking about people's cardiovascular health in terms of apple consumption, we were surprised to find that apple consumption improves cardiovascular health. In one study, women who consumed an average, don't be alarmed by the accuracy of the number, 71 grams of apples per day, were 43% less likely to die from cardiovascular disease compared to women who ate no apples at all, having a very similar diet. Pay attention to that 43%, because that's almost three times more likely than the men. The men consumed an average of 54 grams of apples per day, and the reduction in cardiovascular disease risk in this study was 19%. That's a pretty significant figure, albeit three times less than in women. So we won't surprise you with the results of three studies in which cardiovascular disease mortality in older men 65 to 84 years old, who consumed an average of about 70 grams of apples a day was significantly lower compared to men who ate few or no apples. Well, and this is understandable, cardiovascular health largely depends on whether atherosclerotic plaques, that is cholesterol plaques, accumulate in the blood vessels or not, that is on your lipid metabolism. And so in this study, summarizing the results of several dozen scientific studies, the scientists drew a general, albeit very vague, conclusion. Namely, eating one apple a day may be as effective at reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease in people over 50 as taking statins. Recall that statins are drugs that reduce bad cholesterol and reduce the formation of atherosclerotic plaques and blood vessels. That said, statins have very unpleasant side effects and are very expensive, unlike apples, which have virtually no side effects. We will talk to you about the harm of apples a little later. The function of our blood vessels is also very dependent on how high the antioxidant status of the body is, and apples in this case also work as an antioxidant, precisely because of the presence of a large amount of polyphenols. 
the study found that eating just about 150 grams of apples per day increased the level of antioxidant enzymes in the blood and the overall antioxidant effect of blood plasma. Moreover, not only apples themselves, but even apple juice has an antioxidant effect as early as 30 minutes after consumption, and this effect lasts up to an hour and a half. Thus, your anti-cancer defense and protection of blood vessels from aging and deteriorating function lasts 90 minutes after half a glass of apple juice. The more apples, the greater the antioxidant protection. But I'll note, it's not safe. We'll talk about the harms of apples at the end of this video, and we'll also determine a safe dose of apples for health. So, the more apples, the higher the antioxidant defense of the body. Consuming 600 grams of apples, which is four or five large apples a day, protects lymphocytes, which are white blood cells that protect our body from foreign invasion and kill cancer cells in particular. The effect of 600 grams of apples protected lymphocytes from DNA damage as early as three hours after consumption, and this protection persisted for nearly 24 hours after consumption. But 600 grams of apples per day is really a lot. Therefore, in order not to exceed the safe dose of apples, it is necessary to maintain the antioxidant defense of the body by eating other foods. We will talk about them later. Most authors of articles or nutritionists, seeing that some product has antioxidant action, immediately conclude that this product can be used to protect against cancer, and they will be completely wrong. Because not every product that has antioxidant effects can actually cure cancer. If you consume the product itself, then using these kinds of strains and naturally increases the readability of the article, the viewability of the video. But I rely solely on human studies that have proven the actual benefits of consuming a particular product in a certain amount. Here, for example, apples really do help with cancer. Here's a study of over 6,000 people that showed that eating one or more medium-sized apples, averaging about 166 grams per day, was associated with a reduced risk of cancer compared to eating fewer apples or no apples at all. Particularly significant reductions in cancer risk were observed for cancers of the mouth and pharynx by 18%, esophagus by 22%, rectum, one of the most common cancers, by 30%, larynx by 41%, breast, the most common cancer among our ladies, by 24%, and an ovarian cancer, also by 24%. For men, unfortunately, Apples were less beneficial, but still eating them reduces the risk of prostate cancer by 7%. We can see that eating apples in perfectly normal amounts can actually protect you. An overlooked and, indeed, quite unexpected property of apples is their ability to improve lung health and protect against asthma, and not only in you, but also in your future children. Here are the conclusions of this study. Women who consumed the most apples were the least likely to suffer from asthma. Consuming each additional 31 grams of apples per day reduced the risk of asthma by 10%. Consumption of apples by pregnant women reduces the risk of asthma even in their future children. In this study, pregnant women were divided into three groups. The first group ate apples no more than once a week or not at all. The second group ate apples one emits four times a week and the third group, ate apples, more than four times a week. It turned out that the more often the mom ate apples, the less often the child was diagnosed with asthma. In this study, the children were examined for five years after birth. These babies were also much less likely to suffer from wheezing lungs and any lung disease during the first five years of life. So mamas, devour your apples, without, of course, exceeding reasonable and healthy doses which we'll talk to you about at the end of this video. Here are the results of the study. People who ate two to six apples a week had a 27% lower risk of developing diabetes. And those who ate one apple a day had a 28% lower risk of developing diabetes than those who ate no apples at all. So apples for diabetics can be helpful to protect yourself from diabetes. At the end, we will discuss which apples for diabetics are harmful and which are useful because apples have a very different composition. And because of this, they have different effects on the body of people, healthy and people with diabetes. In order not to get diabetes, it is very important to have a normal weight. And apples can help you reach a normal weight under one condition, which I will talk about a little later. In this study, 
the women were divided into three groups. They were all overweight and were given either 300 grams of apples, the same amount of pears, or 60 grams of oatmeal cookies, which were equal in fiber and digestible carbohydrates. Each group was given dietary advice to lose weight at a rate of one pound per month. So, adding apples as a supplement and component to their average daily calorie intake resulted in an increase in weight loss of one, three pounds over 10 weeks after the other two groups. That is, people who ate cookies or pears equaled that. So, replacing apples with pears or cookies will at least help you lose weight. But you should realize that apples only reduce weight if you reduce your total calorie intake and follow a healthy lifestyle. Apples contain a significant amount of various sugars that can disrupt normal metabolism. Accordingly, you should not eat too many apples either, about a healthy amount of apples at the end of this video. In addition to directly helping you become healthier, apples also improve your health indirectly by protecting your intestines and stomach from adverse effects. Indomethacin is a non-steroidal painkiller and anti-inflammatory drug, and taking it unfortunately harms your stomach and intestines. Yes, it helps with all kinds of pain, arthritis and other conditions, but it also significantly impairs your stomach, gastrointestinal tract, in live rats. This is the first study done on animals. Consuming apple extract 1 or 10 hours before taking indomethacin reduced intestinal damage by 40 to 45 percent. Researchers concluded that eating whole apples along with painkillers can significantly reduce their damage to the stomach or intestines. So, if you have a headache or at least take painkillers regularly or occasionally, washing them down with apples would be much safer. Preliminary research in test tubes, not yet on humans, suggests that a substance in the peel of apples, we'll talk about whether you should peel apples a little later, may protect against stomach ulcers by reducing the rate at which helicobacter develops. So, we have already realized that the peel of apples contains very useful substances, and we are faced with the question, to peel apples or not to peel. A little later, we will discuss with you whether it is really harmful or useful wax, which is not always covered with apples. But if you peel apples from the peel, unfortunately, you will significantly reduce their healthfulness Here's a study showing that the pulp contains on average 24 times less phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium than the peel of apples. Of course, all apples vary in variety and in their various nutrient content, but the overall trend is the same. The peel contains the greatest amount of various nutrients, while the flesh of apples contains the most sugars and is therefore the least beneficial. Most people peel apples not only to make apple charlotte, which is not very tasty with the skins on, but also because they are afraid of the waxy coating that is used to preserve the apples. Oddly enough, people all over the world don't like apples with an artificial wax coating. Here's a study that found that 84% of consumers said they specifically prefer apples without a wax coating. But after people who don't like wax on apples were given information about the actual harmfulness or health benefits of that wax, 40% of them changed their minds and 42% did not meaning almost half of people don't want to see wax on apples. I'm talking about artificial wax now, because apples produce their own natural wax for protection. It's different from artificial wax, and that wax is actually beneficial. The thing is that apple wax itself is a very complex substance. It contains about 50 compounds. In particular, it includes an acid that can reduce the risks of cancer. Although, of course, in the quantities in which we eat it, we are unlikely to get enough acid to reduce the risk of cancer. But in any case, apple skins, as you and I have already realized, are useful. And some apples contain a lot of wax even in their natural form. Granny Smiths, for example, appear waxy even though they are freshly plucked from the tree and have never been treated with wax. A little later, I'll show you what natural and waxed apples, naturally waxed apples, and artificially waxed apples look like. For now, you and I will talk about how harmful the wax that coats apples is. The apple industry claims that it is absolutely not harmful. That all these waxes are supposedly made from natural food ingredients. They are all certified and safe to eat. Allegedly, all of the formulations that the apples are coated with come from natural sources. And if you thought they were being coated with beeswax in the bottleneck, you are sorely mistaken. It's carnauba wax from the leaves of the Brazilian palm tree. 
It's also a confectionery wax derived from desert cane plants, and less than 2% is food-grade shellac, which is derived from insects. Beeswax is not used to process apples, oddly enough, but believe it. With this research in America, one of the companies producing this wax to coat various fruits would even go all the way to the Supreme Court and prove the safety of their product. However, the truth is that we can never be completely sure that this wax used to coat our apples is harmless. So, the advice, friends, you and I must realize that it is best to eat apples with natural wax, especially since this wax is healthy. So how do we distinguish one from the other? Artificial wax gives the apple a duck-like appearance. It is not a natural shine. To the touch, the apple comes out quite greasy. An apple that has its own wax shines differently, but still leaves a matte sheen. This wax does not lend itself to polishing, unless, of course, you rub with a cloth on purpose. Well, the easiest way, of course, is to buy apples from home growers, small farmers who don't have the money for those expensive waxing machines where they take the apples to, and who just keep the apples in their normal state. No, actually that's exactly what I do, because as you and I have already found out, apples are quite beneficial as an antioxidant and affect our blood. What does apple juice do to us? Fiber slows the absorption of sugars, which means that apple juice devoid of fiber raises blood sugar levels much faster and is incomparably more harmful and less beneficial. In principle, this is true, but extremely trivial and is a very simplistic view of the problem. In fact, everything is much deeper. Determine what exactly in apples is more useful. Their juice, which contains almost all polyphenols, or apple fiber, pectin. This is a special fiber that our bacteria can digest. Scientists took rats and did a study. Rats that were given pectin and apple polyphenols separately, and a group of rats that were given pectin and apple polyphenols together, showed different results. It turned out that pectin and polyphenols eaten together reduced cholesterol absorption by 43%. In addition, rats that ate pectin and apple polyphenols together had increased production of short-chain fatty acids these are extremely beneficial components that are produced specifically by our gut bacteria. And short-chain fatty acids nourish the heart, the intestinal walls, don't consume glucose, and our brains and muscles just love them. So, in rats that ate both apple polyphenols and apple fiber, pectin, the production of such useful short-chain acids was increased by about three times compared to rats that ate only pectin or polyphenols. Accordingly, the scientists concluded that it was eating whole apples that provided significantly more health benefits than eating only juice or apple fiber. And this suggests that they affect the body synergistically. That is, all components of apples enhance and support the mutual beneficial effect. So, from this point of view, it is better to eat apples whole, rather than in juice form. Another human study showed that in just five weeks, the concentration of low-density cholesterol, that is bad cholesterol, increased in people who consumed 500 milliliters of apple juice compared to those who ate 550 grams of whole apples. That is drinking apple juice worsened the cholesterol profile, unlike eating whole apples. Accordingly, we conclude that apples should be eaten whole. In what quantity, we'll discuss now, very shortly. And if you already drink juice, drink cloudy, so-called unfiltered juice. It has more useful polyphenols, at least you will get at least some benefit from such juice. So, friends, you and I have come to the most fascinating part of our apple tour, choosing apples. I've looked at a lot of apple research. There are actually an incredible few hundred varieties. The 20 apple varieties are the top selling apple varieties. And so this study was simply determining how many nutrients are found in the 20 top selling apple varieties. In terms of vitamin C content, which is usually trumpeted by all nutritionists, Apples essentially short-circuit our food chain, meaning that the average apple eaten off the tree contains at best 20 record 25 minus 30 milligrams per 100 grams, which is somewhere between 3 and minus 4 times less than regular white cabbage and about 3 times less than citrus fruits. Given that apples can't be eaten uncontrollably, you can't eat too many of them. You won't get enough vitamin C even by eating a safe amount of apples. But I have researched the health benefits of apples, and from that perspective, there are two varieties of apples that contain the most vitamin C. They are called Oregon Spur and Star Crimson. Pause the video 
if you want to take note of these names. Moving on. The greatest health benefits of apples are not in the vitamin C or minerals, but in the antioxidants they contain. Here are the five types of apples that are most rich in antioxidants. To win carbon, she read, shift scarlet, golden berlin, right one and power spur. Next, we'll take a look at how the different health benefits combine and determine with you which apple variety is the healthiest in terms of beneficial carotenoids. I've highlighted seven apple varieties here, and they are Golden Delicious, Winter Banana, Oregon Spur, Start Crimson Red, Shift Scarlet's 2, Scarlet Gold and Silver Spur. Now, pay attention. Let's talk about the harmfulness of apples. So, apples can be harmful too, and the most harmful components of apples are the components that we most appreciate apples for. Those are the sugars. We love sweet things. Most people, at least, love sweet apples. So, the sugars in apples are primarily fructose, and then already, although not in all apples, sucrose and glucose. There are a lot of sugars in apples, so it is very easy to exceed the safe amount of sugars by eating one apple. As for overeating sugars, it's not that simple. Being overweight is also about increasing systemic inflammation in the body and making things worse, and they improve lipid metabolism, meaning they increase bad cholesterol in particular which is what we observed by drinking half a liter of apple juice a day for five weeks in one of the studies I talked about. In that same study, scientists determined how much glucose, fructose, and sucrose are in different apples. And what struck me, different varieties of apples contain different amounts of these three sugars. Notice that for healthy people, it is not glucose or even sucrose, a common sugar, but fructose that is most harmful. The fact is that fructose is very easy to overeat, and excess fructose significantly worsens various health indicators, from liver health to uric acid buildup. Excess fructose, believe me, is mind-boggling and brings other incalculable disasters to our bodies, even if you and I consume natural fructose from natural foods. By the way, I am going to make a video about fructose sometime. If you're interested in such a topic, write in the comments that it interests you and I'll make that video later. As I said before, for healthy people, fructose is the most harmful sugar. So those apples that have the most fructose in them are the most harmful to us. For us. So for healthy people and about what apples to eat for diabetics. Because fructose, exactly, for diabetics makes it easier to control blood sugar levels. We'll talk to you about that a little bit later. Now I am replacing those varieties of apples which, as we found out, are the most significant in terms of vitamin C, antioxidants, and carotenoids. From this list, you and I will pick five winners, namely those apples that contain the least fructose and the most either antioxidants, carotenoids, or both together. So here are our winners. They are Winter Banana, Top Red, Red Chief, Scarlet Spur 2, and Silver Spur. For diabetics, the most beneficial apple varieties are precisely those that contain less glucose and sucrose, which is a sugar that directly raises blood glucose levels. And the most useful apples are those that contain more fructose, because they make it easier to control blood sugar levels. It turns out that the healthiest apples for diabetics are those that can be red. I've highlighted seven winning apples for diabetics. They too contain the most antioxidants, carotenoids while having the least amount of glucose and sucrose, and the most fructose. So they can still be harmful. And next, and that's apples again, the winter banana. Don't be surprised, I put it at the top of our list. The thing is, it's very high in fructose, but lower in other sugars, and it has the highest amount of polyphenols and carotenoids of any apple. And as studies have shown, polyphenols and carotenoids can significantly reduce the damage of fructose. Other high fructose apples, Winter Banana, Goldspur, Starkspur Golden, Royal Delicious, Early Red Minus One, Gale Gala, Spartan. Finally, you and I will now determine the therapeutic dose of apples. First of all, let me remind you that apples are extremely low in vitamins and minerals. I'll explain why I'm bringing this up again. The fact is that since they are low in both vitamins and minerals, and on the other hand, we cannot exceed the safe amount of fruit at all because of the abundance of fructose, apples, especially in the cold season when the beneficial substances are scarce, should be combined with other, much richer in vitamins, fruits, and vegetables. Therefore, you and I will need to eat some minimum amount of apples that will be beneficial. 
I'm going to name it now. And at the same time we should remember that we should not eat a lot of apples and replace with them other useful fruits, which contain much more vitamins and useful substances, because this will cause indirect harm to our body by reducing the amount of vitamins and minerals consumed. The most useful winter fruits and vegetables are citrus fruits, kiwi, red and white cabbage, cauliflower, not a bad option, sweet pepper, any greens and spinach. And what is definitely worth consuming is frozen various berries. The darker they are, the more intense the coloring, the higher their antioxidant protection. And if you and I remember roughly what quantities of apples have been used in various studies, we realize that based on all this data and the sugars, vitamins, minerals, it is wise to limit the amount of apples consumed to a maximum of 100 to 150 grams per day. This is either one small or one fairly medium-sized apple per day. That's it. One apple and no more than one apple keeps the doctor at a distance from your body, from your system. That's why we try to eat no more than one apple a day. Operate with the names that I gave you and stay healthy and happy, awake and energetic, which, in fact, I always wish with my videos. More information on this topic you will find on our channel. Subscribe and turn on the bell of all notifications. Please like and share this video with your friends. Thank you to our sponsors for your support. I look forward to your comments and encourage you to watch these helpful videos.